Minister Chong, Governor Kim, Mr. Mayor, President Kim of Koika, Ambassador Do, and uh, dear colleagues from all over the world, let me say what a tremendous honor it is to be here together with you and also to say what a privilege it is, and I know I speak on behalf of all of us coming from outside of Korea, what a privilege it is to be in this wonderful country, such a beautiful country, and such an inspiring country, because there is no other country in the whole world that has had Korea's economic success and political success over the past half century and that has now also given us our wonderful United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. And so for all of us coming from outside, this is a remarkable chance to gain the benefits of your experience and your pioneering efforts. And we're here because we know how much we can learn from Korea's success. This is my 30th year of coming to Korea. I'm a uh, so-called scholar of economic development, but what I know is what I have seen here and learned from Korea. And so I try to share the knowledge. And one of the things that I've learned from Korea coming here for 30 years is the can-do spirit. That's why 15 years ago when UN Secretary General Kofi Annan asked me to become the UN's advisor on the Millennium Development Goals, and many people said, no, that's not possible. We can't do that. What difference do goals make? I remembered Korea's example to say, of course, we can do that. And this is a great motivation because Korea is a proof of what can be accomplished. So we're here to learn. I've been learning for 30 years and I have the privilege this morning to share a few of those lessons and a few of the thoughts about the next 15 years. Why 15 years? Because all of the member states of the United Nations all 193 governments just a few weeks ago on September 25th adopted a new set of goals, the Sustainable Development Goals, for the period from 2016 to 2030. And we're here because we know that Samuel Undang can be an enormous force and concept for achieving these new sustainable development goals, just as they have been a force for the great progress that has been achieved during the period of the Millennium Development Goals. Now, the concept of sustainable development, as adopted by all of our countries, is that we should combine three objectives in our society. Economic development, including the end of poverty. Social inclusion, meaning fairness, gender equality, and the observance of human rights. And environmental sustainability, meaning that we achieve economic development in a manner which protects the physical environment and especially since we're just one week before the start of the climate conference, that we understand that we must achieve economic development in a manner which stops the dangerous human-caused climate change. So all of this was agreed on September 25th. And some people will say, oh, what difference does it make to set goals like this? And other cynics will say, oh, that's too idealistic to think about the end of poverty. But then there is Korea to show us. 
This is a country in which almost everybody was poor in 1960 and which has eliminated extreme poverty completely within the course of this half century. And indeed, in the decade of Semayo Undang, the 1970s, you just heard about the dramatic breakthroughs with incomes rising several times within one decade that was achieved, not as an imagination, not uh, as uh, just wishful thinking, but actual achievement. And we are in Korea today with an economy that is at the cutting edge of world technology. In the toughest markets in the whole world, Samsung going head to head with Apple, championing information technology, robotics, nanotechnology, battery technology, electric vehicles, self-driving vehicles. You just have to be in Korea for any day to read the newspaper and you see how Korea is pushing forward on the very cutting edge of global technology. So that is achievable. Don't let anybody tell us the sustainable development goals are not within reach. They are within reach and we should keep the example of Korea in mind and learn how Korea achieved these successes. And we should thank Korea for making it possible to learn from these successes by sharing the experiences with us. These are the 17 sustainable development goals. And since I am a professor, I get to give homework assignments. My assignment to you is to know the 17 sustainable development goals because you are development leaders. And when a young child says to you, what's that? You can say, well, sustainable development goal three is to ensure that you have access to health coverage. And sustainable development goal number four is that you will have a quality education. And sustainable development goal 13 is that you will grow up in a world without the dangers of human-induced climate change. And SDG 16, which our world dearly needs, is that we will live in peaceful societies. So these are worthy goals, but they're on a tight timeline. SDG number one, calls on us to end extreme poverty, end extreme poverty by the year 2030. Can this be done? The answer is it's tough, it's very difficult, but yes, it can be accomplished. 15 years is long enough for every country here, if it's diligent, if it is lucky to have internal peace, cooperation, strong development effort, openness to the world, to technology, to education, and good partnership, including partnership with COICA and with Korea, to make a tremendous advance and to end extreme poverty. Now what's interesting is that this is homework for all of us. The Millennium Development Goals focused on the poorest countries. The Sustainable Development Goals are for everybody. In my own country, the United States, we have lots of work to do, believe me. We are not a sustainable development economy. Even Korea has work to do. Korea knows that. Usually when you come to Korea and you see the miracles, everybody tells you, oh, no, no, it's not as good as it looks. Because Koreans are always working hard for self-improvement. And no matter how well it looks, they say, no, we have to do better. The competition is tough. We have to be ready for it. We have to move forward. So these are universal goals. They apply to the rich countries and the poor countries. And this makes for global solidarity. 
This is not about any one country telling another, you must do this. This is about all of us working together to solve shared global problems. And when we see the horrific and the tragic and the murderous terrorism in other parts of the world, we know that the only way truly to overcome this is by a shared global vision of decency and working together because at the core of this must be a commitment of humanity for all of humanity. Wars can never end this. It has to be the shared vision that we're moving together for sustainable development. Now, Semail Undong is a powerful part of the solution for the sustainable development goals. It is especially oriented towards villages because it is, of course, the new village movement. It's a technique for community-based development, primarily, though I think not only in rural areas, but it is about community effort, community or social capital, community investments, community progress. And this is a very important part of success. I should say that it's not the only part of success because Samuel Undong fits within an even larger picture which Korea has mastered so magnificently. Together with Samuel Undong came a major effort at industrialization, at technological advance, at world-class education system, and at quality national infrastructure. So Semail Undong focused on the rural development, but in the context of national development. And this is also important, I think, for all of us looking at Semail Undong from outside. It's not the full story, it's a crucial component of what needs to be done. And governments need to think holistically. They need to think about many different parts of a national strategy. That has always been the hallmark of Korea's success, that it's not focused only on one thing, that it's focused on heavy industrialization, agricultural improvement, educational improvement, and so on. I will tell you a story. When I was a young graduate student in economics, that was a long time ago, and Korea embarked on heavy industrialization, my professor said to me, you see, they're making the typical mistake this will not work. They should just focus on light industry and on a few things. And of course, Korea knew better than my professors. That's not unusual for academics. We have to learn from success and learn from experience. And so I say to all of you from every country, and we have leading representatives from Ethiopia, from Vietnam, from Afghanistan, from so many parts of the world here. The SDGs are an opportunity for a holistic framework. Don't be shy about them. Assign them to the different ministries, coordinate, but take the goals seriously and the timeline seriously. And as Semayo Undong did and does have a set of objectives and standards and say, we must achieve these. During the 1970s, the villages were ranked from the most basic villages to the self-sufficient villages. And at the beginning, most of Korea's 33,000 villages were in the basic category. But by the end of one decade, they had almost all reached self-sufficiency. So this is the kind of timeline that needs to be put in place. By the way, don't wait for the World Bank or other organizations or for the UN, which I love. You have to move faster than they know how to move because you have to end poverty even before you sign the contract with them, which sometimes takes 10 years. Don't wait. Move. That's the basic lesson. Now, Semai Undong had several precepts. Goal orientation. Set the goals. 
Sustainable development goals are very helpful for this. Don't be scared, be bold. Second, community-based. Don't just think of individuals. It's the community which builds, which inspires each other, what we call social capital. Sometimes highly individualistic societies forget this, like my own country. In the United States, they say, you're on your own. If you're poor, that's your own problem. It's a wrong idea because if the community moves together, everybody gets lifted up better. And so the community or social capital is crucial. Third is, as I've said, an integrated strategy. Take many pieces. If you're talking about rural development, pay attention to basic infrastructure like the roads you saw being built. Power, now with solar power. Agricultural development, public health, improved schools, community empowerment, gender equality, adult literacy. Don't say we'll do one or two things this decade. Make an integrated strategy because this is what a community can do. We don't live by only one objective. We need to move on many fronts together for success, and this was at the essence of semi Dong. And then fifth, fourth, sorry, is technology. Every time I've come to Korea for 30 years, the discussion is always about the next technology because Korea took the idea already 50 years ago that the way out of poverty was not only empowerment, as important as that is, but empowerment with powerful technology. And now Korea is absolutely at the cutting edge of world technology, one of the most innovative countries in the world, one of the highest patenting countries in the world. So I say to all of us, when we think about a village project in agriculture or in healthcare or in education, don't think about a schoolroom like it was 40 years ago with maybe a teacher, maybe a piece of chalk, maybe a blackboard. Think about a schoolroom now with Samsung galaxies in the students' hands, with online education, with whiteboards, with connectivity giving every child, even in a poor community, access to thousands and thousands of books for free because all you need is a solar panel and a Samsung computer and you're made. The information is out there now. So we need to think with technology how to go faster to make the breakthroughs. And then the fifth precept of Samuel Undong that I think was very important is a commercial orientation. Make business because this has to last. This is not handouts. This is to make income generating activities that can keep the village moving forward for the long term. This is a powerful combination that can work. Now, very briefly, let me say we have momentum now, positive momentum, thanks to the Millennium Development Goals. And I want to commend the greatest MDG advocate that we've had, Ambassador Doe, because every time the MDG advocates met at the United Nations, Ambassador Doe was saying, go faster, go farther and giving everybody such encouragement. And when we look at the results of the MDG period, we can really take heart. The headline goal was to cut poverty by half, comparing 1990 and 2015. Well, we went much farther than going down by half, because according to the most recent World Bank data, the poverty rate was 37% in 1990, and this year, it is under 10%, 9.6% of the world's population. We should give ourselves a hand for that. That's a lot of progress. Now, 10% of the world's population is still almost 800 million people, so we're not done yet. And Sub-Saharan Africa, which is well represented at this meeting, remains the biggest remaining challenge, but with a lot of progress right now. 
because the poverty rate in sub-Saharan Africa came down from 58% in 1990 to an estimated 37%. Now, I believe the next 15 years for sub-Saharan Africa should be like Korea's years of the 1970s and 1980s. This should be the period in which Africa finishes the job of ending extreme poverty. It's possible, and remember that there will be two billion Africans by mid-century, and when Africa's out of poverty, that's going to be an important marketplace, an important source of materials, commodities, produced goods, culture, entertainment, knowledge. So I also say to Korea's business people, go make business in Africa, go invest, because this is the market that remains for the fastest growth and the fastest takeoff right now. But I also say to Africa's leaders, follow the lessons of Semai Ondong and invest in the sustainable development goals to make the breakthroughs. This graph, I hope you can see it, is very interesting for all of us because it's a, a bit of the deepest source of Korea's success, I might say. On the horizontal axis is the average test score of students from a group of countries. And on the vertical axis is the economic growth rate. And the line slopes up. The higher the student performance, the faster the economic growth. Ultimately, our economy's economic growth depends on educational attainment. And Korea's growth might be called education-led development because no country has done more to pursue quality of education, excellence of education, than Korea. And I know it, by the way, because one of the great prime ministers of this country, Prime Minister Han Sung Su, was, before he became prime minister, the chairman of the Department of Economics at Seoul National University. And he's the person that brought me to Korea the first time 30 years ago. And I was a young professor at Harvard University then. And Professor Han, then Prime Minister Han, said to me, I'm going to make a deal with you, Professor Sachs. Every year, I'm going to send you our best students from Seoul National University. And every year, you are going to accept them. And that turned out to be a wonderful deal because we had a generations of the best trained students, absolutely brilliant students, who went on to become prime minister in one case and uh, ministers and lead advisors to uh, lead economists of the African Development Bank. One of them now is the chief economist for the, East A for the Asian Department of the IMF, and so on and so forth. That's educational excellence. I say to all of us, look where Korea is. It's in the upper left-hand corner. Sorry, upper right-hand corner. I should know my, I should learn better in the upper right-hand corner, meaning fastest growth, superb educational attainment. And that's what we all need to do. We need to learn ultimately that in the villages and in the cities, training our children for solid education and without any child left behind, with every child able to complete at least a secondary education and then gain market skills, is crucial, and that is what SDG 4 is about. You will know that because you'll do your homework. Sustainable Development Goal, goal 4 calls for education for all. But there is some remaining news for all of us. First, there still is extreme poverty in parts of the world, even though there's been so much progress. There is high income inequality, and it's even rising in many countries. And then finally, the environmental crisis has not been solved. Our economic growth has often come at the expense of the environment. And that is certainly the case with climate change. So 
just to say in my own country, for example, the measure of inequality has been going up and up and up. That's because we don't have an adequate community spirit in the United States. We're too individualistic. And so when the poor fall behind, they're not helped up again. And the rich don't necessarily feel responsibility for the poor. And that's why cultivating a social ethic, social spirit is so important. We also have what is a famous diagram called the planetary boundaries. It's hard for you to see, but this is around the circle of the planet, all of the big environmental crises, including climate change, ocean acidification, too much pollution from chemical fertilizers, deforestation, depletion of fresh water supplies, loss of other species, and many air pollutants and aerosols. And this afflicts many of the countries in the region. But climate change afflicts all of us. And without having time to go into it, our greenhouse gas emissions are rising like the top curve of this diagram. But they need to come down to zero like the bottom curve of this diagram. So we need to end our greenhouse gas emissions. That is very hard. That means we have to shift from coal, oil, and gas to wind, solar power, nuclear energy, geothermal energy, hydroelectric power, and other zero carbon methods of producing quality energy. So these are big sustainable development goal challenges. I was going to say a word about Korea's own SDG challenges, and let me just point out a couple of things. On some of the SDGs, Korea is absolutely superb. This is a graph of the healthy life expectancy, and Korea is one of the healthiest countries in the world. Long life expectancy and people living healthy, much more than in the United States, for example. So you see the arrow for Korea here among the very top countries. And this is the school results. Korea ranks number one in the world right now in school test performance for 15-year-olds. I say to our Korean colleagues, help us to do the same thing. I urge the government of Korea to help implement a global education fund that promotes the values of Korean education for excellence so that this can be achieved everywhere. But Korea doesn't excel in every category. This is the share of women in the national parliament. Too low. Now, in this, by the way, Rwanda is number one in the world. The, And it's one of the reasons why Rwanda is one of the most successful countries at achieving the Millennium Development Goals. So gender equality and especially in, in but you have a woman president, that's great. That hasn't happened in the United States. Uh, it may come soon, but it hasn't happened yet. And here is a uh, measure of inequality. Korea, in this measure, is somewhere in the middle. Generally on the good side, not extreme, but not as uh, strong, strong equality as in some of the Scandinavian countries, for example. And finally, one more trouble spot for Korea to point out. These are the carbon dioxide emissions per capita. And the problem for Korea is that Korea is an economy built on coal, oil, and gas, traditionally. And now Korea has to make the transition with the rest of the world to a low carbon energy. This will require the very best engineering possible, but you have the best engineers. Uh, and so this is something that we know Korea can do with high energy efficiency, electric vehicles, smart grid, photovoltaic energy, and so on. Many, many possibilities. Now, I know my time is up, 
But let me just say quickly, what will it take to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals? First, good planning and budgeting. And that's also part of the Semail Undong philosophy, is plan ahead. And we have the esteemed, uh, wonderful Minister of Finance of Ethiopia. I always say Ministry of Finance is the toughest job in the world, I'm sorry to say this. But it's the place where this kind of planning is so essential because in the end of the day, it's investing in the resources in education, in health, in infrastructure, in power, in water, uh, in providing the business environment that is so key. Second is networks of knowledge, excellence. And we need our universities to be actively engaged. And fortunately, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has called for a world knowledge network of universities called the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. And I'm greatly honored to be the director of this network on behalf of the Secretary General. And I'm very, very happy that Korea is one of the most vibrant leaders of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. Third is we need rapid deployment of information technology for success. Now, Korea is arguably the most uh, IT-connected society in the whole world. By some measures, the use of internet and broadband is the highest in this country. And of course, Korea is the provider of some of the best hardware and software in ICTs. I'm convinced that if we want to make the end of poverty real, in today's poor countries, deploying information technology will be a fundamental part of the success. So I would like Samsung and LG and other world-class information technology providers to be very active promoters of the Sustainable Development Goals. And I would like every country that is here to ask how information technology can be deployed in the clinics, in the schools, in the hands of community health workers, for smart infrastructure, for renewable energy, and for other areas where information technology will provide remarkable, low-cost, effective solutions. And then finally, I would add, is citizens' engagement. Because this is also part of what Semai Undong was about. It wasn't that things were done to the village, it is things were done by the village. It is to let everybody know in every village, you must achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. We can help, but you must have the lead. And that, after all, is the Semail Undong spirit, which is that this is self-reliance, and that if the village doesn't take the lead, it can't happen by being imposed from outside. So we have had a wonderful strategy with Koika, with the province of Gyeongsang Bukdo and Governor Kim, with the World Tourism Organization Step Foundation of Ambassador Do that goes back six years, taking the Semayo Undong philosophy to African villages. And I can tell you it works. It really works. It inspires, it helps to organize, it keeps everybody moving faster than they otherwise would move. And this is what really needs to be done is we keep everybody alert that if you're going to make the goal by 2030, we have to start running together in partnership now. And our experience is that this is a completely successful approach. We have Millennium Villages throughout Africa and all through the African Millennium Villages, which will now become the sustainable development districts. We are using Semayo Undong concepts of integrated, self-help, business-oriented development. And this, I think, is something that I would share with everybody as a recommendation. 
and we're using technologies, smartphones in the hands of community health workers and computers in the hands of students who then have access to worldwide information and smart grids which use information technology for microgrid solar power which can be a solution for energy for every place. And I'm thrilled that in Ethiopia and Rwanda and elsewhere, this is all being scaled up now by government that is moving fast and forward to national scale solutions. I want to conclude by saying that the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, established by Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, is available to work with all of you, especially in our partnership with COICA, with the province of Gyeongsangbuk-do, with the government of Korea, in helping to put these ideas into practice. This is a solutions network. It is aiming to solve practical problems. Ladies and gentlemen, we have big challenges, but we also have big goals and big aspirations. We're in a country that has achieved what would seem to be miracles, impossible, but it's achieved them through hard work, through focus, through diligence, through great aptitude and great strategy. And we're so grateful that Korea is sharing these lessons with the whole world. Thank you very much.